Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bombast. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcast. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom, and always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more, and then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Cinema Surprise by us, the Penny Bloom Podcast. Today is the season one finale of Cinema Surprise, and we're going out on a fucking high note, baby. My last pick of the season was The Fablemans, released on November 23rd, 2022, written by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner, directed by by steven spielberg i am colton robertson i'm joined by joseph george what's up homie oh what up what up it is always a pleasure to be here oh and it is always a pleasure to have you and today feels like a a a true a true pleasure i i was excited to show you this movie um it's been one that you've heard me talk about Mm -hmm. for a year and a half as it came i watched it for the first time in december of 2022 Mm -hmm. um almost nearing two years now um and I, 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 I must ask, did I, uh, did I oversell? <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't know I'd have like a, a new all timer, um, on my own, just my own personal all time best movies of all time. I don't know. Most, I don't even know what to really call it anymore because like I have movies like Spider-Man up very high and I know I just can't put Spider-Man next to like even this, the fit, you know, yeah, it's like, right. it's, it's impossible, but, um, no, this one, it's sitting at two right now uh well i think it was um and then i put i put some star wars ones above it i, I did pull the trigger i think too fast but immediately mm-hmm. it jumped no, right that's to where your two. gut takes no mm-hmm. like and that's that's the impact this movie has mm-hmm. i i was going to be astonished if this wasn't one of your favorite movies of all time mm. like and if i can be that confident in how good a movie is mm. that's my, like i don't know if you'll recall a couple weeks back i think i used the sumai for a 10 on singing in the rain i think um Mm -hmm. just a couple weeks ago and i was so confident i could use it then because i knew for a fact there would be no qualms about this one being a 10 um yeah no so like that's that like that's just the i can't speak highly enough about the fablemans i think that this is i mean it's certainly amongst my favorite movies of all time uh there's there's such a vulnerability and a self-analyzation that Spielberg does while also creating a relative, relatively universal coming of age story, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. obviously specific events we can't all relate to, but the general transitionary period in that, that time of your life, uh, and statistically there's probably about 50% of people watching this who can relate more closely to the exact events yeah of of the movie um it's astonishingly well done and i i will say we this is our third 2022 movie in cinema surprise we had it took up a fourth it took up a fourth of our Mm. cinema surprise 2022 um babylon banshees and this and all three by the way nominated for best score all fucking horrendously robbed um i'd go babylon Fablemans, Banshees, and All Quiet on the Western Front wouldn't come close to any of them, which is what won. Mm. Um, yeah, Babylon. Hey, wow. and I love everything everywhere all at once. You know I love everything everywhere all at once. The Daniels did not deserve best writing or best direction. Not when it was up against this. Not when it was up against Spielberg here. Um, Spielberg? It's, it, like, that's, I was, it was such a good movie that I was just so into it. But every time that I, I took a step, like, I had to take myself out to kind of be like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like, Spielberg is directing this movie in which he's telling this character who is himself, like, exactly how to feel. You you know, like, the relationship that that actor has to have, like, uh, 
Yeah, Gabriel LaBelle. LaBelle. Oh yeah. my god. That I the relationship he has with Spielberg has to be awesome. I don't know. Like that yeah. this had to be the coolest movie to make. Like if you're a Spielberg fan and I don't mm-hmm. how is that possible to not be I don't know. Right, are are right. there Spielberg haters out there? Is that even possible? There, cer- there certainly um, are. But th- what's really you, you bring up a good point there with like Gabriel LaBelle, the relationship he had to have formed with Spielberg. I mean, we've got a star in the making. With Gabriel yeah. LaBelle. There. The kid is fucking incredible. Um, is and he I of absolutely anybody? adore him. Um, my movie. little brother. Um, oh, he really? reminds me of my little brother. Just yeah, straight he reminds up. me of Quentin a lot. Um, okay. I got. It's, it's mostly at certain angles. Like, uh, there will be a now. profile. Every time mm. he's like in a profile, like, I remember there's a dark moment in the movie, relatively dark, but it's after his mom hits him. Um, and he goes and he stands against the door and it's like his side profile leaning against the mm. door. He has like almost an identical profile mm. to my little brother and it blows my fucking mind every time I watch this movie. Um, wow. but who, who, who do you have in mind? Oh, uh, well it's Freddie off stranger things. I wish I should, uh, the new, uh, rock, you know, rock. Is that his name in, in stranger things? Freddie? Maybe Eddie. that's Eddie. 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 Yeah. I mean, okay. That didn't. Okay. But, uh, I don't know why it just. That's interesting, I, Joseph I, Quinn, huh? Yeah, yeah there it is, uh, Joseph Quinn. I didn't, I didn't quite every didn't now and that. then. Yeah, just with like shorter hair. If if he didn't have the got, the rock and mullet, I got you. Um, it felt like yeah, every now and I then. I can see that, but no, uh, I, but I love Gabriel LaBelle, and I think mm-hmm. that the the portrayal of him of Sammy Fableman was so incredibly well done that I mean, I'll be astonished if. Gabriel LaBelle's not a name we we know for years to come. He's already been cast in the new uh there's there's a new movie coming out called SNL 1975 which is about the first the first airing of Ooh. the first episode of Saturday Night Live and I remember that he's going to be he's he was one of the first people announced to be in it so I'm pretty sure he's going to be a pretty big part. Mm. But uh I'm looking forward to that. But uh wow. yeah, no, Spielberg's Spielberg's vulnerability on display here is is incredible. Um, there's such a rawness and such a there is obviously a meta nature to this movie because Spielberg is one of those directors that's not like it's not like it's little known, you know. Mm. It's it, it, you know like if Denis Villeneuve, he's obviously not little known either, but if he made a movie kind of like this that was autobiographical, it wouldn't hit the same because we don't feel like we know Denis Villanueva nearly as well as we feel like we know Spielberg. Mm. And Spielberg knows we know him that well, so there is also like that layer of, like whenever at the end of the movie, whenever he's talking to the jock at the end of the movie and he's like, mm. uh, he's like, never tell anybody about this. And he's like, I-, I won't, I promise, unless I make a movie about it, which is the movie he's making right now. Oh. You know, like, uh, it's, oh, uh, so it's cool. incredible. That's, it's incredible. You know, that is what Endgame wishes it could have done. You know, like, <laughs> I feel like that's like, uh, just Hollywood's kind of like a, a fourth wall break. I don't know. I feel like that's just kind of like a, the ultimate status that you can reach whenever you're at that level where you're right. Like we do, it wouldn't really work with another director, really. Like it, I don't well, know. And then it just, the, the actual end of this movie, just I love, I love the last scene in this movie, mostly because we're talking about three of my favorite film directors of all time. We have one of the greatest film directors of all time directing one of my favorite and one of the best film directors of all time who happens to be playing one of the greatest film directors of all time. Uh, That's David Lynch. That's David Lynch playing John Ford at the end. Um, Oh, I just kind of assumed. I'm just like, well, I don't know what what John Ford looks like. John Ford's long gone. Okay, I kind of thought that. I'm like, he's probably dead. That's kind of nuts if this is really him. No, it's David Lynch. That's David Lynch playing him, and he Uh. does a fantastic fucking job. So just like the the amount of joy that scene alone fills me with, (laughs) Uh. because I love, I love A Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and the fact that that's the movie that inspires him to make his first you know, Western sort of thing that he shows, that he, the one that he pokes the pinholes in and makes uh-huh. the gun, like, that was inspired by a man who shot Liberty Valance. Yeah. And then at the end, that's the last 
like that's the last poster on the wall next to him. He's like, holy shit, I'm here. You know, like I'm with the mm. guy who made the movie that made me yeah. want to make movies. Because he, and, I feel like he leans up against that exact poster. Like whenever he's mm-hmm. outside with his boys and mm-hmm. he goes in, yeah. he's that. Yeah. that's the movie they're watching, I think, when mm-hmm. he's like, shut up, you know, or like. No, fantastic. Saying, but, uh, uh, another one that I almost picked uh, during season one of Cinema Surprise, by the mm. way, I almost pulled trick on a man who showed oh, the rebalance. But man, uh, yeah, no, it's. So thankful you picked this movie, like because I skipped it. I I skipped it for Banshees. That was this was number two. Um, it was between this and Banshees, and I don't know why. Uh, what made me go with Banshees? But man, it would have sucked. Like if we did have this the other way around, and Banshees was this, the finale, <laughs> and the Fablemans was the penultimate. Yeah, no, it just it would. Well, no, have it just felt like such well, a fitting but, end. Mm. You know, like for for this for this part of the project, like there's such a positive note, a love of film, a love of filmmaking. Oh. It just. And it's so much more than that. You know, I remember you describing the reason you ended up going with Banshees was because you were worried this would fall too much in the Babylon singing in the rain vein. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's you know, there's an element of that. You know, know, Mm -hmm. like my favorite line of the movie is from Mitzi, his mom, when at the very beginning when she says uh, movies are dreams, doll, that you never forget. Mm -hmm. I, I love that because, yeah, duh, fucking right on the fucking money. And there's just so much of Spielberg's love for movies and movie making that just absolutely bleeds through all over this movie. But beyond that, the family drama that ensues and the coming of age story that happens throughout this movie is one of the best family dramas or coming of age stories Mm -hmm. I've ever seen. So like, and the fact that it is so rooted in reality is another reason that this movie just gets better and better because it is so personal. It is so, and you feel it, you feel how much Spielberg loved making this movie, Mm -hmm. you know, and it it hits like a truck. I love it. Sitting in their living room while their parents are telling them, we're about to have the, you know, we're doing this. And he, you it's know, scene. the one, the, the shot That's, of him yeah, yeah. thinking Seeing how he would him. shoot it, you know, mm-hmm. it's, he's experiencing the emotions in the time. He kind of knew this was going to probably yeah. happen at some point. So like, it's probably not a shock to him, but like still an emotional moment to go through. But like, I think part of that cry is also like, oh my God, I'm also thinking of how I would shoot mm, this right yeah. now. But then we are watching how he shot it right now. Like we, we yeah. are watching how he eventually shot it. And shot, that's, yeah, no, that is my favorite scene of the movie because that is the uh, most poignant like, self analyzation and self reflective thing I've ever seen a director do. Um, that moment always just makes me fucking like sob. Um, yeah. And there's tear ups before, you know, or I mean, there's, there's some cry. I mean, I'm, I am teared up the whole movie almost. Mm. It's it's just I'm still stuffed up from it today. Like right, I'm I'm, right. I'm I'm I did not have allergies at the beginning of today, um, <laughs> but now yeah no I'm I'm stuffed up because of this movie and I I literally told my mom I'm like hey maybe this is one you just stay away from actually Cause I think like not not because of I don't I I don't think like if my if my mom watches this movie I'm gonna you know I. I'm not placing my mother um, into this yeah, movie no, sort of thing. No, I just I get she just cries so easily over anything mm. that this movie might actually like cause respiratory problems. I don't know eventually, <laughs> but no, I mean it was oh my it was and there were such good cries the whole time too. Like every time I teared up, mm. it was so nice. I was ne- I was never like oh my god again. No, I was just it was just kind of like oh like it felt it's so... just kind of steady oh, and. I think that that's a product of just how personal it is, you know, like there is there's a layer to it where you can just feel how vulnerable this is of Steven Spielberg. It's not even like there are moments where there are tear ups where it's just from the amount Sammy loves filmmaking, you Mm. know, and the reason you tear up is because, you know, these moments led to some of your favorite movies ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, without yeah. him sitting in the theater for the first time with the with the projector glowing over his head, I never get to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is one of my five favorite movies of all time. You know, and this is right there with it. Like, and that's there is there's something to be said for how much and like for as vulnerable and personal as this movie is. If you watch any other Spielberg movie again, oh, it's gonna be so it, different. 
it recontextualizes every single one of his movies. You've seen Catch Me If You Can, right? Mm-hmm. I have, actually. Do you remember what Leonardo DiCaprio's, uh, what his parents' launching off point was? His parents? Okay. I remember their apartment. That's actually, or just where they lived, yeah. the visual, Well, his dad's not... Christopher Walken. Um, oh, okay. And if I recall correctly, okay. uh, Leo's mom marries um, their dad's best friend and leaves him with his son. You know, like that's that's the sort of shit I'm talking about. Like there are certain oh, movies where man. the where the villain, like the villain in Indiana Jones: Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, is played by Kate Blanchett. Would give me one guess what you think kind of haircut she has. Whoa. Yeah. Real tight, real tight bob around the head. Looks a lot like Mitzi Fableman. Hmm. Uh, when we get to The Last Crusade on The Sentimentalist, inevitably, that's Indiana Jones and his dad, played by Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And the the relationship they have is, you know, Sean Connery's character is like, I, I wanted this for you. Why'd you go into this? What are you doing? You know, like, uh, how oh. could you have become this? But he ultimately ends up being proud of him, you know? And, like, that's... Like, it just seeps through in everything he's ever done. And it's just a really good example of how an artist will always pull from their life to create, to create, you know? And while this is as personal as you can possibly get besides doing a literal, like, going, this movie's going to be called The Spielbergs and it's about me and my family, you know? Or a documentary. Like, it's just... I guess... How much of because obviously there are probably some parts that are dramatic. There's plenty of drama. And, and there's plenty of dramatization. Yeah, but like yeah, there's plenty. I'm assuming the big beats of yes. things are just legitimate. Like this, it, I mean, it, it might as this is the documentary he would make. He wouldn't make a documentary, like because Mm-mm. even his camping trip video. You know, if if it's to be believed that that he just took videos of his camping trips and and of this, you know skip day whatever it might not have been skip day but he he's filming all the time and i love that he can even film someone so well that they get pissed off because they mm-hmm. look so good they'll never live up the to movie. the image he's created of them you know in, like uh i thought for sure when he was watching like oh and, and the shot of like the mirror reflecting you could see the movie in the background of what's mm. the jock's name um whatever oh, uh, jock whatever you could see the jock watching the movie but also you could see the movie in the mirror it's a reflection that they that they pretty themselves up in or whatever but like i thought right. i thought for sure that he was going to be like you know i, I i've never known this but i i think i want to be an actor now you know or like i don't mm-hmm. know like i thought that that was going to be like the storyline instead of him coming up to him being like Yo, dude, what the fuck? Like, yeah, why like, are you so goddamn talented that you made me impossible? Like, he was so pissed. And I mean, he had a lot going on too. I guess a lot. No, more and that's going on. And that's him, what's but. cool is that that's one of those points that's I'm uh, my money is on dramatized. You mm. know, I I I because that's just such a perfect movie moment. You know, he even says, you know, life's not like the movies, Fableman. But hey, in the end, you got the girl. You know, like all that stuff. Like I. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but that character is so fascinating. I absolutely love that. I don't love him, but I love what they did with that character. And I love that they're trying to make a point about this guy trying to fit an archetype. He's already trying to be something he's not, you know, he's already trying to fill this image of the, you know, the all American athlete. He's mm-hmm. the all American boy at their school. He's the, you know, he's the jock. He's a little bit of a bully, but he's got the girl and he's, you know, everybody loves him. Everybody thinks he's a good guy. They're all cheering for him when they see him on the, on the screen. Mm-hmm. And then he sees himself as he wants to present himself, but knows he's He's never been. And the fact that one of the things that I think permeates throughout this movie is that it shows the power of a director very, very well. Like uh, the that dumb point whenever, military guy. The, oh, yeah. Whatever. But uh, even beyond that, whenever he shows his family the camping trip video and he's already discovered you know the, mm. the 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 dark side of the camping trip um whenever he shows him that and his mom hugs him and goes you see me you know like uh now he's really he's able to yeah, yeah. He, he's able to capture mm. what 
other people don't even know is there strictly, you know, like I, before he shows his mom, the alternative footage of, of, of her and Benny, um, I think there's a chance she's never consciously even considered it a possibility that she would act on that. You know, I'd be willing to bet it's not until then that she's like, at least that's again, that's how Spielberg portrays it, Mm -hmm. which then plays into his guilt as Sammy Fableman thinking it's all his fault that things fell apart. Even though it's not like she this was inevitable. If she was in love with Benny, that's how it was going to go. But he portrays it in a way that's like this was the spurring moment. This was the event that made everything spiral. All of a sudden, nothing was ever the same because I showed my mom the video of her in love with Benny. And Mm -hmm. I just think there's such a poignant vulnerability and. I, I keep coming back to that vulnerability because that's just that's just what it is. It's so personal and tick, it's so tick, boom. Write what you mm. know. I forgot who said it. Uh, who gave him that advice of just it's Sondheim? Yeah, but just no. Wait, it was his. It was his agent. That was like uh, that was like right on the know. phone. The the girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess that girl. Yeah, but uh, yeah. just write what you know. And this is very clearly what Spielberg knows. And yeah, I, don't, I mean this. I don't. I just. I don't understand how, like, a a movie, like, this is just a movie. It was two hours and what? Yeah, 30 minutes? Like, I didn't want it to end, for one. Like, I just don't understand how a movie can actually get you to feel this way. I I had no idea. These are characters. Actors are playing these people. They're not even Mm -hmm. real. You know, they're, they're portraying real people. It's just boggles my mind and that's that's another thing you know you you mentioned the dumb military guy who ends up being like mm. who ends up acting his ass off because of a good director you know and you you talk about forgetting that these people are actors who are seeping into mm. a role you know like i can't believe how good everybody is is, is in this movie you know like uh mm. everybody there's not a single hole that i could poke and be like this this character's not too well done. Oh my. You know, they're all fucking good. Um, oh, my. The amount of flexing that's kind of going on right now in this movie. Like, oh, because yeah. Oh, yeah. Spielberg's directing young Spielberg to direct that dumb military guy mm-hmm. on how to direct, uh, you know, all, whatever. He knows he's one of the greatest directors who's ever lived. That's the comparison he's drawing whenever he gets to meet John Ford at the end. Yeah. You know, like he... He's earned that too, mm. you know. Like it's not even it's not even like oh well, dude, come on now, be a little more humble. No, he's earned that. This man is late in his career; he's almost mm. eighty. Like he's mm-hmm. this was this is this almost feels like the culmination of a career. The fact that this isn't his last movie is astonishing. You know what I'm saying? Like it feels yeah. like it should be a sign off. Tarantino, um, listen, you know, see. You can just keep doing it. I don't know. You could know. just keep like doing it, it but uh, no, yeah. This it does. It does feel like a sign off. You're right. It does feel like a kind of like, here you go. But I could show you exactly how good I am at this and how good I've always been at this. You know, like it was like I was born for this shit. The you know, train like that crash. You know that yeah. he filmed that is. You know, and I, it, all these things aren't probably exactly, but like his mom even on that was like, "Holy shit! Like wow! Like I mean, you the, the little I thought the that little was the greatest yeah, I mean, show on earth. He more, replicated more, it more, very more. well. I wonder if yeah. uh, the pinhole, the poking the holes to to make the muzzle flashes happen. I wonder mm-hmm. if that was real or if he like um, if he legitimately. If you go to IMDb, his earliest credits are the short films in this movie. <gasps> Yeah. What? Um, yeah. Uh, Escape did they to refilm nowhere, the military them, or did film? they show the actual? Spielberg oh no, they refilmed cuts. them with. Okay. The, yeah, they, yeah. Did, they didn't. Um, okay, I was gonna say. Well, yeah, duh, because there's actual the actors that are in the movie. Okay, yeah. duh. Um, I guess that's just how into the story I am. I legitimately right. thought like, this could be real. God yeah. damn it! But no, yeah, um, like uh, the first one's like the last gun, which I think is renamed Gunsmog in the in the movie, and uh, and then Escape to Nowhere. Oh. That is awesome. I wonder if he was like, um, if he saw that pinhole like through somewhere, or if it truly was off like a random inspiration, like his mom stepping through her her music sheet, you know, and mm. um, is is I guess what what did it for him. But yeah, wow. Well, and there's stuff like that that's so specific that mm. it's almost like when you are talking about such a personal film, 
a lot of these have to be very specific memories. Like to even put a date at the beginning of the movie. Mm. He knows what day he fell in love wow. with movies. You know what I'm saying? Like That's nuts. it's January 10th, 1952, which I will add is 48 years to the day before I was born. Another reason I love I love this movie. Um, that's January 10th pops dope. up on the screen, and I'm like, oh, you, oh, that's me. You know, like, uh, but, uh, like, that's something that you don't just throw a date at that. You know, I, I'm I'm certain Spielberg knows what day he went to go see that movie. He, you know, like, because uh, there's not another date card the rest of the film. It's just. Damn. That could also be that it was right before Hanukkah. You know, and, like, they're just throwing a number on it like that, you know, but I don't know. Um, That's kind of, I wish, I don't know, I'm trying to, th- there's nothing in my childhood, I think, that I can be like, yes. That is when my love for whatever has begun, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I that, That's tough. Um, like, because I do love movies, and I, I would like, it would be really cool to make a movie, but I know that. I'm never going to make a movie. Like, I, that's just not my bag. That's, that is, mm-hmm. I, it, it'd be really cool, but not my bag. But, like, yeah, I wonder what that, like, I'm kind of jealous of, like, a, a childhood moment that he can actually point to and be like, yes, this, this changed my life this. and decided what the course of my yeah. entire existence would be. Honest? Was um, it traumatizing or cool to him or both? Like, what, because he felt like he was trying to, like, hide his, like, Ang- like anxiety feelings towards it with just like mm-hmm. oh this has to be like the coolest this is such a cool crash and whatever but like I feel like it was kind of just like a holy shit I've never seen anything like this before like he's a kid well, I think there's a blend of things going on there you know I think if you recall the way it felt to we watch things every once in a while now and we're like oh that's a little that's a little scary. I can't believe that's in a kid's movie, you know? But that was some of the most exciting shit to watch in kid's movies when you were younger. It was the stuff that pushed the edge for you. It was the stuff that was like, oh, man, I don't feel like I'm supposed to be seeing this. You know what I'm saying? And that mm. excites you. That sticks with you. And that that's what decides, you know, like this is, oh, I like the way this makes me feel, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that that was, I think another thing was a, uh, just a true fascination with the fact that it was done at all. You know, like... uh how did they trash that? Uh, how did they crash that yeah. train? How did the people inside fall over the place? Mm. How, like a curiosity. She says, you know, he he wants to control it. You know, he wants to he wants to make the train mm. crash. He wants to figure out how it was done. Um, so like, there's there's another really important line from Bert Fableman, played wonderfully by Paul Dano. Um, mm. Whenever they come home from the uh escape to nowhere the, or no not not the escape to nowhere the one with the pins uh the the gun smog i think is what it was called mm-hmm. um his the one where he got his badge um and he's like how'd you do that and he's like pins i poked holes in the film he's like god thinking like an engineer you know and he and he starts talking about how like what you do is kind of like what i do isn't it you know like i know what my guys need to do and i know how to get it done you know and he's like yeah, I, I guess, you know, like, he's like, I don't yeah. want to say it like that, but yeah, I, just, the way you put it, simply like that, yeah. It's, it's like, yes, it is the same, but different, and the difference is, your passions are just down different branches, you know, and like, mm-hmm. I, like this, the characters couldn't have been, I don't know, any more perfect for this movie, just uh, the father, and like, the this... I fear this person. Like I fear becoming uh what's what's uh, Paul Dano? Bert. I, Bert. Okay, Bert. I just Paul Dano was the only name in in my head during the whole movie, but I just suck with character names. But Bert, I, I this is like I fear becoming this person. I do not want to be just I don't know. This is my my worst fear is to become kind of this person at the end. like I, I don't think he's a bad not not to say that he's a bad person. Uh, he's a great person. He's loving, caring. Like that is everything great about him. But just to be, I guess, that disconnected and too focused in on the work and too, I don't know, not human enough. You know, like uh, yeah, I guess analytical. And, yeah, and and like I, I feel like the the blend between the two engineers that we saw like is, is kind of perfect. You don't want to be the the home wrecker, you know, that's coming in and sweeping <laughs> in, but you know that that's one thing and but you don't want to be the the dad that's like 
hey kids, look at this triangle here. Do you know why it's a triangle? Because the center of gravity is real, real strong. And look at, you know, and then and then they just see their mom playing on a tree. And they're like, yeah, that's way more fun. We're going right, over there. Right. And it's... Well, and that's... And but, I, I adore Bert Fableman, man. You know, mm. I do. I love him. I... The, when Michelle Williams, who is also utterly fucking fantastic in this movie, um, throws out the whole... Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to leave your dad. He's the kindest, most sweetest, most caring, most empathetic, most, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get angry at him. He goes and buys me a dress. You know, I do, I do like, I, there's nothing he could possibly do that may, he can't possibly conceive of there being anything wrong here. And for that, she oh. loves him, but it's also why there can't be anything. There's, that's why there's nothing left. And that's why, like, mm -hmm. ultimately I feel so fucking bad for Bert. I love I love Bert Fableman because you know when it came to that moment whenever you know he's doing the fire and you know he's he's just trying to relay onto his kids what he loves, mm -hmm. you know. He's got to know his audience a little bit, that's... but still like that's not the worst thing a father can do. Oh yeah. You know. No, good. The... Good. Oh no, like yeah, he's never done anything wrong per se. No, yeah. It's but, just but he, he, to he know when know to sit audience. down or to yeah. know when yeah. to kind of be like, you know what? Maybe not yet or maybe mm. in in another way, you know. Because Whenever he he was explaining how film worked at the beginning, you know, to 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 little little Sam, uh, I bet like I don't know, maybe maybe that was a little interesting to him. But then like it just kind of went on a little too long, you know. And then mm -hmm. it's like his mom just turned him around and was like, "It's gonna be fun," you know, or just talk to him like a kid, you know. After um, movies are dreams, yeah. doll, and she never oh, forget. That's that's um, what she says right that's, when that's he turns. That's when she says, oh, when, "Yeah, and yeah, perfect." Because yeah. he he's it's the perfect contrast between and they they literally don't cut during that scene they show one uh -huh. side of sammy they show the other side of sammy and it's they they pan to paul dano and they, the, your brain can't hold onto the picture fast enough which gives you the impression that a still picture is actually moving a motion picture and that's mm. that's exciting for him that's what makes it cool to him it's not the fact that it's a story it's not the fact that it's art it's the fact that mm -hmm. there is a fascinating science behind yeah. it that ends up resulting in something as cool as this and and then her, for her to come in with the artistic perspective, which is why another one of my favorite scenes and another one of my favorite performances, one of the most interesting Oscar nominations of the year from this movie was Judd Hirsch as Uncle Boris. Um, he got nominated for an Oscar hey. for Best Supporting Actor. Um I mean, he came in and he left his mark. Oh, he, he did the thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that, that scene is... It... it hmm. It's the centrally most important scene to Sammy's characterization. It it determines everything, and it's just Judd Hirsch going in for about five minutes. Um, yeah. Whenever he's like, uh, "Your family and your art, it will tear you in two, you know. And he he, he talks about mm. you know, like you love them, you love your family. I know you do, but this this I think you love more, you know. And then that comes back around whenever he's imagining how he'd film the sequence where his parents are telling them they'd get a divorce, you know, like mm -hmm. that moment isn't as important to him as it is to think about how he would shoot the moment, you know? And I think that there's such a, uh. I, that is the most important part of the movie for Sammy's character. And the way that there's, uh, there's such a fascinating blend of all sorts of Spielberg all over this movie. I love the, vaguely scary sequence that precedes uncle Bo uncle boris showing up where uh the phone rings and she answers the phone and don't let him in who mama who are you talking about yeah. don't let him in and then paul dano takes the phone and he's like you're having a nightmare you know like uh and again i'm going paul dano for my performance man mm. i love him as bert fableman i think that you know michelle williams got an oscar nom you know, she lost to Michelle Yeoh, which you're never going to hear me Fair enough. complain about. I love Michelle Yeoh. Um, mm -hmm. Judd Hirsch lost to Kwan. I agree with that wholeheartedly as well. What I don't agree with, even though I do love Judd Hirsch in this movie, is that Paul Dano didn't get the nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it's it's a subtle, you know, more of a very subtle, oh, sure. and he is for kind sure. of hidden. Kind of, I don't know, that is kind of what he's doing, but... 
I don't know. It's it's it is just as impressive to play that. Yeah, and like to Oh yeah. The subtle facial movements that he had, you know, just the whenever he goes in my the kitchen shot. and yeah, that like Dude, my shot is whenever he is he sees the picture of them and he just looks out and there's a shadow on the wall um and the shadow behind him has sort of the vague shape of Mitzi. I don't know if you if you clock that. Wow. Um yeah, it has what? it has the the vague shape of you can see a little bit of the bob on the on the head there and there's a it's it's just kind of I might be projecting onto it but that's how I like to see it. Um Oh, and, you're uh, right, dude. Yeah, that is so like, uh, purposeful. It has to. Do, be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't do that on accident, you know. And that's like it's just such a gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching moment when he realizes Sort of, you know, like he, he comes and talks to his son a little bit after that. And he goes, you know, like we've we're too deep into our story for us to say the end. You know, mm. still holding on to the idea that perhaps there's a future for him and Mitzi. And there's there's a Mitzi shaped hole in his heart. She was the perfect balance for him. He was not the perfect balance for her. You know, even their daughter, another one of my favorite characters in this movie. Mm. I absolutely adore her whenever she's talking to Sammy while he's editing his beach picture. And she says, uh. She laughs at Benny's jokes, but dad was always her best audience, you know, like that is Mm -hmm. on, on the money, you know, and I get, I get chills. Like the fact, again, I love everything everywhere all at once, but the fact that this screenplay doesn't win best screenplay is (laughs) fucking insane. Uh, it's, and I think, and again, everything everywhere all at once, one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely adore it, but like, there's just some things the movie can't do nearly as well as what this accomplishes. And that's one of them. There's not, there's plenty of stuff in everything, every world at once that hits like a truck, but even that line, which is not one of the hardest hitting lines in the movie, you know, like th- there are, there are lines in the movie that I think hit even harder, mm. but that one line by a major supporting character, like a, a being just like, she laughs, she laughs at Benny, all of Benny's jokes, but dad was yeah. her best audience. You know, like that's, so, that's an incredible line. The daughters that is had an nothing. Unbelievable like line. they were just kind of there in the movie before, just as kind of extras. And that was kind of at, at least the first the divorce scene. Definitely, they got they got some some stuff to go on. But I feel like it, before they were just kind of like in the back of the car to make some noise mm-hmm. or or whatever. But then they helped him with his his films when he was younger mm-hmm. and stuff. You know that was cute. I but liked then that. the one sister that was like that came in and just kind of you know it was right after the divorce and everything whatever and the conversation eventually gets to like you know but you like you're selfish too like and you don't realize it but you're like out of all of us you're the closest you are the most to, like, like her like her and then he uh, you know like he was like whoa he was like holy shit like out of like it kind of but he knew it was true like it, you know he could he wasn't trying to like deny it he was just like oh like shit this is the kind of like the first time it's it's hit mm. me but yeah like what a moment to get out of out of one of the siblings that you know, that is just a, a random one moment that they, I don't know. And then the, the little embrace they have afterwards of like, Hey, before mm-hmm. I show this to the whole school, can you at least watch it with me? And yeah. you know, they, they hug, you know, there. And I don't, it's just little moments like that, that cause I started tracking every moment that I like teared up or like a, a good tear up. And then oh, I just, yeah, that's I stopped. One of them. Uh, I stopped eventually. I was just like, it's, yeah. it's, the, it's getting too full. Um, but I guess I have showing his mom the movie in the closet. That was the the oh. first train one, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever he he he's looking at it on his hand first. That's mm-hmm. I think my shot uh, of the Gorgeous. movie. Oh my Gorgeous god! I, and just the idea of it, like it's just like a kid, like in his. Oh, I don't know. Well, and oh, it's, it's it's also again just like Spielberg, like holding the movies in the palm of his hand. Come you on. know, like this is like, this is him. You know, like yeah. it's just it's just perfect. Come on, it's the poster I also changed uh, oh, to letter. The way he pulls. The way he pulls her into the room for the first one, and then he does it again whenever he's showing her the late, like the shot of him holding his hand up and at the end, like, smiling oh my on the God. second time at first, and she's like, oh, just uh, like last time, and then it's like yeah. a way different dude. And they don't even like, show the movie, and they just stick with Michelle Williams, thank just you. slowly. God, thank dude, you. I know. Like I'm like, I know. I, on one hand, I'm like, I kind of wanted to see what just a raw. Because this probably wasn't a an edit, you know, put together well. This was just the scraps that he had. I bet it would still look really good, but this it the decision was perfect just to keep the camera on her the whole time and just no cuts. Oh man, yeah, it was it was perfect. But 
yeah the the first initial train crash um that made me mm. tear up which was nice um and then making his first movie um with his siblings like whenever they they got all the mummy you know they were all mummified yeah, so, or, and like it's just um, it, he, there's a nostalgia there that's kind of oh, timeless you know you remember yes he brings them up to the attic and he scares them or whatever and he has this yeah. like light circle yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. it look just like so good and he's just I don't know. I feel like that like details like that are too specific for him to not like he did shit like that at home. Like mm-hmm. that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, and just the innovation he shows as a young filmmaker working on a shoestring budget where like uh when he's shooting the war picture and it's just like the plank that yeah. he steps on the end of and it simulates that sort of thing. Firecrackers in the walls and stuff. Like mm-hmm. that's that's cool as fuck. That's a great idea. And Bird poop. it's just Nope. Yes. yes. Ice cream. Little movie magic. All the little movie magic things mm-hmm. that were in there were, was just so cool. God, and the beach, the the ditch day sequence is really, really mm. cute. You know, I there's a lot of just really, really cute stuff in this movie, too. And I, I think it's so funny that he has a girlfriend who fetishizes him for being <laughs> Jewish, like, Jewish like Jesus. Um, You're a really fun guy to kiss, you know. It's like that's all she yeah. really cares. Like he looks yeah. like Jesus and he's good at kissing. Um, yeah. Maybe Spielberg's just – he's got Jesus his Mac is game. Sexy. Yeah, it, what man? That that was was. You think that was his first kiss? Like, uh, uh, at least was in the movie. Yeah, I, that's a know, good point. I didn't. No way. Like, this has to be dramatized, but it would be inc- It would be hilarious if this dude's first kiss, or I don't, I don't think they. I think that's all they did there. You know, um, but that yeah, like yeah, just I to didn't. be like. Having well, she's Jesus. she's she's down. For, she's she's dedicated her life to Christ. Yeah. They didn't go any uh, further than a kiss. That's there. true. But um, I mean, just to have G- like Jesus there in the moment, like you're yeah. you're forced to have to like just call Jesus into you. You know, Cause, hey Jesus, um, uh, yeah, he's like you're there. <laughs> show me a sign. You know, like uh, and <laughs> she, <laughs> you can't, you can't come into me, Jesus. He's like, come here. What? Yeah, he's like, no, yeah. Well, true. I don't know. We've been we've been fine for like five thousand years. I don't know. We've been chilling. <laughs> like, I loved how how like calm and relaxed he was about everything. Oh, he had and, a little bit of game uh, there, you know. Like whenever mm-hmm. he was like, "Well, we've been doing fine for about five thousand years, so you know how it is." You know, uh, I, I I loved that whole scene. Bloody no, yeah, just knows all. I don't there's know, a really can... interest. Like again, credit to Gabriel Labelle for the way he plays Sammy here, because there's a fascinating balance whenever he's in his element. He's as confident and suave and cool as anybody else in the movie. And then when he's completely out of it, mm-hmm. he's, he's he feels so sad and not pathetic, but like I don't know, like he's playing yeah. empathetic. It's not it's not like he the the character himself. I know he's not pathetic, but mm-hmm. you know, like he feels like he is pathetic in those yeah. moments. You know, and uh, they show the the general high school uh, mm-hmm. kind of getting bullied. Uh, you know, he's not well, good at sports. A, a little he's... bit more, a little bit more specific than that too, with the anti-Semitism he faced. In that's his new true. School, you know? That sucks. Um, yeah, that's just. Yeah, that was that, just that was sucks. a rough. Uh, yeah, and like that's that's another one of those things that's not dramatized. You know, like uh, they they moved to California. They're the only Jewish people for miles, and that's you know, and it's 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 bizarre to think about how much th- this specific element has evolved Mm -hmm. you know like uh it's fascinating that there was a guy at his school who could look at him and like know that he was jewish you know i don't think i can do that i don't think i can look i don't have that ability you know exactly and that's what's and that's what's interesting is that a lot of people who have that ability are either jewish or they are anti-semitic you know what i'm saying like uh it's uh point them out for a reason you know like yeah yeah. and so but that's that's what's interesting is that like i feel like that's not a con like that's not a common thing people can just do now is like you must be jewish you know like i don't i don't uh i i I can hardly, I can hardly ever tell that. Um, yeah, that, and uh, that one other guy, you know, the main job oh, that was, God, whatever, but the, the smaller kind of. God, I hated him, uh, and that's why the last scene is so fucking awesome. You know, uh, he kind, of, he's he's demented, like medically. So yeah. watch your back. You know, like uh, yeah, that that whole sequence. But uh, whenever whenever they are. You know, they're not buddy buddy at the end, but you know, they've got that weird relationship going that uh also has I always project it onto a movie, a vague homoeroticism. Um 
there's there, there's there's some, specifically like with a, Sammy Fableman, the whole fucking movie feels you know. Um, mm-hmm. There's a really important speech Steven Spielberg gave at the Oscars um, following this movie, where everyone was like, "I thought you were going to come out right like right there, like uh, that's that's what it felt like on wow. whenever he was talking about it." So like, there's there's like you know in a movie that is so personal and so specific and so you know they are they aren't depicting Sammy as effeminate, you know, not strictly, but they're obviously not depicting him as masculine mm-hmm. um, because he's not. He's he's artsy and he's he, that's that's his vein and that's kind of the side of the the side of this the plate he swings on, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot of speculation after this movie where everyone was like, Sammy Fableman is not straight. Like that was kind of uh, that was kind of the uh, the impression you know, that a lot of people came away from this movie with. Um, maybe it is just uh, you gotta know you gotta know what looks good. You know, to shoot good. Uh, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, I had that exact thought. Like the way he shoots the jock is a track not a way a man you know would, like or a, no like a man shooting a man you know i guess yeah like you know like wouldn't. uh one of our one of our straightest filmmakers is uh richard linklater uh richard linklater is a straight man and you can tell uh in the way that he shoots movies you know like it's not it, it's not that he's he's very good at romance he can he can depict the shit out of a romance but it's the gaze is almost always on the woman You know, like that is almost always Mm. the case. It's always like, oh, this woman is otherworldly. Spielberg has a knack for shooting men that way. Also, you know, uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah. Um, Harrison Ford and and uh, Karen Allen and Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, both of those people are extraordinarily attractive. Mm. Um, Minority Report, uh, War of the Worlds. Anytime he's ever shot Tom Cruise, it feels like he's like, yep, that's that's Tom Cruise right there. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, it feels like he shoots he shoots him with a with a certain uh, like that's a, that's a beautiful man, you know. And so like there there's mm-hmm. no sense in speculating about real life people's sexuality or anything, but that that is something that in this movie when Sammy Fableman shoots him like that, it's like, oh you know, like there's there's something yeah. there a little bit. Um, I don't know. I feel like everyone kind of in the in the art game, maybe not just in the art game, maybe just like just generally happier people are more just comfortable saying that like I'm not 100 percent straight or yeah, 100%, right. You know, it's yeah. just like it's like yeah, I, I can just I can just say that's I would an never. Man it's like I don't know or maybe. whatever. And no, uh, I think it um, helps, especially when you're a director. You need to know what looks good or what will get people to feel that emotion, to feel that sense of attraction. And if you're feeling it yourself, then there you go. Mm-hmm. It's probably coming it's from somewhere. Yeah. Well, and there's also but, a certain degree of empathy that it's obvious Spielberg possesses that it's, uh, th- that Sammy possesses. I'm calling him Spielberg, but like there's obvious, mm-hmm. there's an obvious degree of empathy. Like whenever his mom collapses coming out of the closet and starts crying there and he's like, it's fine. It's fine. I won't tell. I won't tell. Like he's been so cold to her for weeks. He's been so, he's been so, you know, like you are ruining, you are being mean to the nicest man alive, mm-hmm. essentially, is how he's feeling, you know, like you, but the moment she comes collapsing out of that closet, like, I didn't, I didn't mean for, th- like, I, lo- I love you and I love dad and I don't want to do anything. So like, I, I, I won't tell, I won't tell. It's okay. You know, like, uh, it's just, oh, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, he's just such a sweet guy. He's such a sweet kid. And I, I love, yeah. I loved Sammy Fableman. Easy character it's, pick for the movie. You yeah. know, there's no other choice. I gave him, um, I gave him the double, the double, um, mm. the performance and the character. Um, I really hope I see him in more. I guess he was, he was in predator, the new predator movie. Uh, and I have seen mm. that a while ago, but I don't remember him being in it. Maybe he was just a, a support, you know, Probably very, brief, very small, yeah. yeah, small, small role. But, um, I don't know. I I really really would like to see him in some new stuff. He's I, got some eyes on him. Yeah, I I kind of wanted to ask if those were contacts or are those those his real eyes? Because I mean, I can't tell. They were like there were points where they're like striking. Yeah, like it's like, like it's like whoa, and not in a particular way where it's like like there are obviously moments like the moment whenever he sees himself in the mirror shooting the sh- shooting it, and then they cut to his eyes. Like mm. he's obviously very good at acting with his eyes. But the scene with like Judd Hirsch when he's playing like scared, his eyes are almost scary. Um, yeah, you know, they, like like they do kind of change. Dark. It feels like you know, like yeah. they are dark, mm-hmm. and it almost looks like he just has black eyes sometimes. And it's, it's it's there are points in this movie where I'm like, man, he's 
Ooh, I feel like he's looking into my fucking soul sometimes. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, mm. Generally, Gabriel Labelle is also like I was just blown away by how good he is. And Michelle Williams is the other like we haven't really talked about her performance, but goddamn, is she good, man? Like uh, she's always good. Yeah. She's Michelle Williams. There's never really anything that you're gonna watch her in and be like, ah, eh, she could have done better. You know, like that's mm-hmm. she is that good. Um, Wide range of emotions and, she had to play here. Uh, she had to and, go and crazy a, a very, little bit, too. A little yeah. bit of a kooky character, also. You know, like, there's there's points in this movie, like, uh, my mama's the best mama. She's a good mama. And she's, like, laying on her on her dying mom and stuff. Like, that's... There's some vulner... Like, there's there's something, too, that, that is, that is uh. like, man, you're good at your job. You know? Like, uh, it's, it's, oh it's almost God. freaky. You know? Like, whenever... Uh, they're going to move to Arizona and Bert's like, uh, he's telling them and the kids are like, what about Benny? And he's like, well, Benny is not. And then she's like, we haven't talked about that. Um, and he's like, no, the, I can't just pull my, I, I, I don't have strings to pull yet. Like I can't do that. And mm. he makes it happen. But before that, whenever she walks outside, like with the tornado going on and everything and is like, come on kids, let's go. Uh, and, uh, they, they jump in the car and everything happens for a reason. Everything about to give you, about to give you a good, uh, indicator of just how good some technology can be when the right person is at the helm. That sequence is shot in the volume. Um, in the car, the, the tornado the car sequence, the tornado sequence is shot in the volume. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, like that's, uh, I guess it is kind of like a retro neighborhood. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. a just a neighborhood you could go to. It you'd have shot in the volume. Yeah, that's how that's how they did that. Um, oh my god, that's yeah, yeah. Tech, dude, yeah, unbelievable. All the stuff like AI, even like AI, like that. That's why I want to see what like a Spielberg would do with AI. You know, like what mm. would he do? In, would he not touch it, or would he? I don't know. Like, I wonder if, what if he had no other choice. You know, yeah. Um, you think he would stay away at all costs? You know, like he just. I do, I do. I think he's kind of got it. Like he, you know, yeah. He's there's done, no need, I guess. He's really. done enough that's that good that he's like, why would I need to yeah, do that? My you know? brain um, is better uh, than yeah, than I've, the computer. I've gotten right to this point, you know. Um, like George Lucas, George Lucas would. True. You know, um, I feel George that Lucas would he'd be curious about that? Yeah, you know? and just kind of out of a like what more uh, interest in what he could make possible, what he could do with it. Not, he wouldn't take the principled stand. He'd be like, well, this is going to happen. I might as well try mm-hmm. it. You know? Um, I feel like it, it would never be like a final product thing, yeah, but I don't like, I feel like it's just like a tool for the process, but the never, process, yeah. yeah. But yeah, just a, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, he but no, like that's, that's part. like, you know, whenever we talk about how, you know, Marvel uses the volume or, you know, quantum mania used the basically shot entirely in the volume for, you know, the quantum realm and stuff. And it's like, you can obviously tell. we're getting a little lazy, like, you know, like, uh, obviously, yeah. but you know, when you see Greg Frazier use it for the Mandalorian and Matt and, and Greg Frazier use it, uh, for the Batman. Um, yeah. And, oh, up on and, that, and, that construction or like unfinished yeah. building with like the sunset, yeah. just keeping that light. That's just perfect. Like a situation like that is Ah, it, it is just perfect, and yeah, yeah but, and then using it for a sequence like this, where I had no clue, you know, there's that's yeah, that's it the looks crazy incredible, thing. like yeah, what, like I could have sworn that was just a set, like a a a legit neighborhood that they were driving around on. That's just. Like even whenever yeah, the the light like whoosh, crashes in front of them and all the shopping carts go in front of that them, that is and... specifically the part that is like shown to be shot in the volume. Wow, that's right. It's like how how he's showing you know, like, off. Like that's dude. when the volume is at its best. Is like I can't even I can't even fathom that that's what you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, even even in the Mandalorian, which kind of speared that technology, mm-hmm. there were points where it was like, oh, once you point it out, I can kind of tell. Yeah, yeah, I cannot do that with the Fablemans. Like I was watching that scene this time, going, okay, this is in the volume. And then I was watching it and I was like, how the fuck is this in the volume? You know, like I was like, that's fucking insane. Um, yeah, dude is flexing and, the entire movie. Yeah. He is just showing what he has. And oh, my God. I mean, 
in all these, like, the little innovations before was just poking holes through film to make muzzle flashes. And now it's using a technology in a way that you don't even know the technology is being used. And that that's the level that you have to get to now, I feel like, to, uh, to have something shocking. But I kind of love that, like, before someone poked holes in the film, that was never thought of before. You know, I don't, maybe Spielberg wasn't the first one to do it ever. Um, mm. Like film splicing and stuff is, as, as was a thing, I guess. I don't know. They, um, it's probably been done before him. But like that's, that, that is an innovation that someone had to make along the way. And like now that right. we're at the volume and whatever we have now. Yeah, specifically when you don't have a budget. You know, like it used to be like muzzle flashes. I don't mm. know when muzzle flashes were developed. I don't know when that technology came to be. You know, but uh, like... Hmm. Yeah, I got it. this is this uh, when a creative doesn't have the means to create with infinite resources. What do they do? You know, and like watching yeah. him grapple with that being a kid making movies. It's fucking awesome. You know, it's hmm. it's super fun to watch. And I absolutely adore it. And I think that what this is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. And I think uh you know, I haven't rewatched everything everywhere all at once in a while. It feels like one of those ones that I'll revisit and be like, oh, yeah. It's back you know? up there. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, but that, like, that's kind of how I feel about it. But it was there for a while. It was there for a couple years before I decided, you know what? I'm comfortable putting other things above it. Um, and this this is one of them. This is one of those things that I am. I'm comfortable being like, you know what? If I'm honest with myself, I think I like this more than everything everywhere all at once. Um I slotted it above both drawns pretty easily, and if a movie mm-hmm. does that for me, I know it's at a at a different tier. And when it went above yeah, the you... Batman easily, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm like, whoa, um, yeah. It's I mean, Interstellar and a couple Star Wars movies is the only thing I have above it, um, mm. and. Yeah, that's yeah. Off the top of my head, I've got Casablanca, Titanic, and Raiders, mm-hmm. and it's just because like principally, I think this is probably it's like right there with Raiders. It's like right there. Um, Damn. But I just love I love Raiders. That's huge. Heart. That's um, huge because I, I haven't uh, I haven't slotted the indie movies in my list yet. I'm 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 I feel like I haven't given them a faithful watch. Uh, the second one was. Mm. Very distracted as well. I was on vacation. It just didn't feel good. So I, I need to give Spielberg, especially now, I'm giving Spielberg all the attention. Uh, he, like, I am, I have to. I mean, this man. He's one of the goats for a reason, man. He's one of the greatest that ever did it. And doing yeah, it. I, Keeping on Like, doing one of the it. movies, one of the main movies that I really, really need to get around to is his West Side Story, um, 2021, the musical movie he did. Um, because I've heard that's fucking incredible. It's just that he's got a black hole of charisma in the lead. I fucking hate Ansel Elgort, and he's a piece of shit. So it's hard to oh that hard to fuck with that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I it, I've only ever seen him in Divergent. I think is like what I know him as. Mm. But he's always yeah. I don't know. Why does he have a punchable face? I'm not a fighter at all whatsoever. But yeah. he does just no, kind of um, have one of those faces. Rumor. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, maybe that's yeah. why. Um, yeah, that's why. That's why. Uh, he's disgusting. But that's, yeah, it was one of those just shitty fucking things where they made West Side Story. They shot it pre pandemic. Hmm. Then stuff came out during the pandemic about him. And they were like, fuck. You know, and they just like had to, they, they made the whole fucking movie. They had to float it out there, you know, like, uh, but yeah, my yeah, thought so, on those things but is beyond that. Ansel Elgort can Ansel Elgort can sing, but even he's not a very good actor, which is also one of the interesting things. That's why I'm excited to watch it to see if Spielberg was able to get something out of him. Um, Probably, you know. Um, I mean, off of this dumb military dude that just kept yeah. walking. You fucking dude, the dude yeah. was so lost in the sauce that he just he had to keep walking. His homies were like, "There was also dude, like come back, like come back." He's like, "I can't right now, bro. I'm sad, and I don't want y'all to see me." All like of you this. were dead because of me, and I. It's my <laughs> fault. Yeah, I mean, homie was. I thought it was the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, it was. But you know that that whole thing. Yes, I, I, I but, loved it. Um, yeah. Oh man, and he's just crying there with him. You know, like kind of. I feel like. I don't know. I feel like that's that's what's got to happen. Unless you're with a professional, you know. If you're with a top of the well, class actor, you just tell them, "Hey, this there's is what's another going little on. there's another little connection there that you know, like the Nazis are an easy villain, 
you know, like you hate the Nazis. Everybody fucking hates the Nazis. But like knowing that his dad fought in World War Two against Nazis, you know, mm. and then you go like, who's the villain of the the first Indiana Jones movies? And it's Nazis. And it's like, you know, like there's, wow. yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's all sorts of stuff. The Spielberg isms, the that uh, yes, the West yes. isms. That's what we God, call it. He, you know? uh, I, I wonder if there's a better um isn't or word for that but i'll stick with spielbergisms i guess for spielgasms. now it's <laughs> yes the uh the spielgasms uh that we're yeah, we're getting on yeah. screen no they they show through very hard i don't know just it's very apparent um after the oh dude and the this, way he lights a fucking shot dude whenever she kneels down da- whenever mitzi kneels down in front of young sammy to hand him the computer the computer the camera and the lights coming in over the top of her and he's being shimmered and it's like there's like a glowing light on the camera like it's obviously gifted. dramatic light yeah, yeah. it's obvious like, holy grail yeah there are so many incredibly thoughtful visual storytelling beats one of them the the most obvious one that people love to point to because it's just heart wrenching um after he shows his film that gets him his merit badge and they show the reactions from his parents. They zoom in on all three of them. Paul Dano looks at Michelle Williams, and then they cut Paul Dano out. They pan away from him as she looks at Benny. Um, and it's like, oh, my God. But earlier than that, at the beginning of the movie, whenever uh, they're all sitting down to dinner, um, and he's going on and on and on and on and no like she's like am i supposed to be getting any of this you know mm. uh and then benny explains it in simpler terms and there's a shot from behind mitzi where she's holding bert's hand to her right and she says god i love bert's brain and then she leans like this and it shows benny's face and then she goes especially when you're around to explain it um and it's just like Oh my Ouch. god, that's fucking brilliant. You know, like that's just uh, Yeah. She and... she just she just pants, she just moves her head. The camera doesn't budge. She just leans her head over to like look at him and it's just god damn, it's brilliant, dude. And there's man, I, who's I can't cinematography, get cinematography. Is he is he Yeah, Janice Kaminsky. Or? Okay. Um, so. uh, he is uh, that's Spielberg's cinematographer. The way uh, Yeoman is Wes Anderson's. Okay. Kaminsky is is Spielberg's and has been for a very very long time. Um man, that's that's a I don't know, I feel like it's uh, the the cinematographer goes under the radar a whole lot of the time, but um I wonder, like, because, uh, like, you, you see pictures every now and then of directors, like, holding the camera for specific shots and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, like, how much of uh, of it is just kind of like a like a tag team, kind of just like oh, they, like a golfer, a bit, like in like a know? caddy talking to like the golfer, mm-hmm. being like, "Hey, yeah, I think this is what we should do for this." Especially shot when it is or... something like that, you know, when the, when it is like they've been working together for. I mean, I don't know how mm-hmm. long Kaminsky's been shooting. Spielberg movies I know he's the cinematographer on Raiders so at least 40 years prior to this um Mm -hmm. and I and maybe he shot Jaws I don't know off the top of my head um but uh like when you have a relationship like that a working relationship like that you kind of I assume become of one mind to a degree you know what I'm saying like you eventually understand what the other's looking for you understand what you need out of a certain scene Mm -hmm. um and it's like it's when you fire on all cylinders like that I mean that's why Yeoman and uh Wes Anderson works so well together. That's why I'm excited to see what uh, the I think it's called the Phoenician Scheme is the next West movie, and it's not being shot by Robert Yeoman. It's his first live action movie that won't be shot by Robert Yeoman. Um, mm. So, okay. like, and that's what's interesting is you know not every Spielberg movie is shot by Kaminsky, but a lot of them are shot by Kaminsky. So it's it's uh, it's fun wow. to kind of see which ones hmm. kind of slip through the cracks, you know? Because like, and I just love. The careers of cinematographers are always so funny, you know. Um, I'm going f- from yeah. Kaminsky has shot one movie since The Fablemans, and it was If, um, the John Krasinski directed Ryan Reynolds mm. imaginary friend movie that just came out. Um, wow. Okay. You know yeah. he also. Uh, <laughs> let's see. There's there's almost certainly some more fun stuff in here. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of Spielberg. In fact, this might be every Spielberg, now that I'm looking <laughs> at it. Um, shot Little Giants. I don't know if you ever watched that, the football movie with the little the little kids playing against each other. Like Little Giants. Been around the block. Oh, I was wrong. He did not shoot uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I apologize for that. They've been working together since uh, Schindler's List in 1993. Mm -hmm. um, Still quite a while. Yeah. Um, I'd say they I have what I was thinking of. Pretty yeah, healthy 30 years, not not 40 years, but um, mm. who shot Raiders? Why am I thinking Douglas of that? Slocum? Douglas Slocum. Yeah. Slocum. Yeah. That's right. That um, is right. But, um, hmm. but no, I mean, I guess the director is still telling the cinematographer. Yeah, same way he does. The same actors, way he tells. Yeah, know? so I guess I guess it's they're really behind the camera. Like the director, yeah, they, is they truly... know what they want. It's the cinematographer's job to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know, like I tell my guys where where I want them and what I need done, and they make it happen. You know, the mm. way Bert says. Um, but uh, <laughs> go to that painting over there. Well, describe it. You know, and I love the wow the the, the final shot. You know. Like, uh, it's oh. the horizon is in the middle, you know, at first. And then they're like, Oop. well, and it's just one of those things where like in, in a movie where he's been flexing the whole time, you know, it's showing that he's, he's not, he's not a prodigy. He's not, mm -hmm. it's not like he was born this way. It, he is still learning. He's all, he, yeah. even now at 79 at 80, he is still learning how to do this. Um, mm. and God, I love that last scene. I love it so much. <laughs> when the horizon's at the bottom, it's interesting. When the horizon's at the top, it's interesting. When the horizon's in the middle, it's boring as shit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, yeah. Um, I, now I'm going to I'm going to well, be looking at every shot now. Um mm -hmm. And, just and it's not a right. it's not but, foolproof, yeah, you know. No. It's not it's not like it's not always the case. But like if you watch Spielberg movies, mm. you will see he's taken this advice. This is not something that it's like this. This is a real piece of advice John Ford gave him. You know, like it's uh, it's and it's something that he has observed. Um, yeah, I mean that he had two meet. I feel like two meetings that were just crucial. It was his what was it, crazy uncle, Uncle um, Boris. Yeah, Uncle Boris. And uh, David Lynch, uh, but yeah, not yeah. really. Uh, yeah, John Ford. But man, those two meetings. Yeah, yeah he remembered remembered those uh, mm. for for quite some time and had quite yeah. the impact. I love as uncle. You know, his uncle's leaving. He like gives him the last little like your family and art will tear you apart. And his whole family's yeah. looking at him like, what the fuck? Like, what, the what did what you, you guys connect talk with about Boris? Like, yeah, because like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, his mom's like, man, what? A I thought that was gonna be. A lot worse than it was. What a nice, pleasant visit. And That's one of the specific shots that everyone always points to whenever they talk about Sam, Sammy's effeminity. Whenever uh, Boris is leaving and his whole family standing there, and he's really he's got, he's oh, got okay. his hands on his hips like this, and he's you know okay. he's kind of he's, he's standing cunty. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, just Gabriel Labelle is so fucking good. He, he's so fucking good in this movie, and. I mean, it's a big movie. Two and a half hours. Uh, it leaves no stone unturned. And it, I mean, like, how are you going to, uh, you know, who's going to tell Spielberg to slow it down? You know, like, hey, no, maybe you cut that. Like, no, this is his movie. You know, um, he's going to, he's going to get, he's going to get mm -hmm. that done. Yeah. Um, this, this feels like a, a holiday time movie, you mm -hmm. know, like this, it would feel so good, cozied up in the winter. Like oh, just yeah. just to watch I watched this it for and... the first time on December fifteenth, twenty twenty two, and uh, oh. I I remember you know January tenth, nineteen fifty two. You know um, there you go. You know you watched have... it for the first time that day. Yeah. Um, I guess you probably loved movies before then. Um, yeah, it but... was it was not the first. <laughs> but th though that is the thing though is that I will say there is no other movie that makes me want to make movies like this movie. Um, mm -hmm. I. You know, like a lot of people will point to, you know, Star Wars and, uh, I mean, even older Spielberg stuff, Jaws, Raiders, stuff like that, you know, and be like, that's, wow, now I know I want to make that happen. Like, I, I, 
I'd had that feeling, but I've never felt that feeling like when I watched The Fablements for the first time. Like when I watched The Fablements for the first time was when I was kind of like, I'm at, at some point in my life, I'm going to make that happen. I don't know how, Be but so I'm going cool. to do that. Yeah. You know? um, it just seems so you have to go. You have to just dive in. You can't just, just like half ass do it. Yeah. Do it. You, you got to do it. Um, and that's. Yeah, it's a a big. I guess I don't know. It could be a simple one. Just made it home with with a couple mm-hmm. people. Um, a silent move. You know, I love that it was just just keeping it rolling. He's like, ah, I can't use any of this. Come on, guys, you're being this is ridiculous. Or like, you know, you just he's talking to him while while recording, not have to worry about audio or anything. And right. Um, yeah, it was just just so many. Feel Quit looking good. at the camera. I yeah. can't use any of this. Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I love... And the way that they're all there, it's his entire family helping him make the movie when they're all shoveling the dust into there, mm-hmm. you know, like... uh Get dust in my carry. He's like, ah, he's we'll, like then we'll clean it. We'll clean you it know? out. Uh, yeah. I, lo- I love that. And it's like, uh, Sammy goes, all right, I need more dust, more dust. And the sisters are like, no more dust. This fucking sucks. And Bert goes, more dust, fellas. You know, like, it's like, uh, it, yeah. it's awesome. Like, they're just, they're so supportive and they love, and, you know... uh you know, Boris obviously says, you know, like the, when they tell you it is hobby, when they tell you it is, you know, it's 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 cute little thing you do. But, you know, you know, it is your life. You know, it is what you are meant to do. Like it's it just it just rocks, mm-hmm. man. It hits so fucking hard. And I love this movie with all my heart. So, um, yeah, I'm glad it was my final pick. Uh, yes. it, it, this was one I decided weeks ago. I was um. going to be a little disappointed last week if you ended up. <laughs> Uh, switching it up on me because I decided this forever ago. Mm. Um, I'm glad there was something. I'm like it. I don't know. I just felt too in that same vein. But everything I'm glad happens it for really a wasn't. reason. Mm. Everything happens for That's a reason. Right. Everything yeah. happens for a perfect a reason. capstone. Yeah, um, yeah. This was no, but uh, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. but Fablemans, man. That'll uh, you feel like we've left any? Do we have we left any stones unturned? Let's see. Gotten everything. I guess a line. I just haven't decided between a Burt line. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. It, at least the delivery was enough. Whenever this was, let's see, when was this? And his apartment at this point. I think no, 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 no. He has not edited the camping trip movie yet, and his dad is like, "Please, just edit this for me. Like your mom would love it." Blah blah blah. And you know, Sam's kind of fighting mm-hmm. back, not wanting to do it, and then. He looks down. And he goes, "Something's not right. I don't know what else to do." And he like crack. He like he's like he's really like getting vulnerable. Yeah, like, and he I says like, know. "Can you help me?" He's like he's just like, "Can you help me?" And then like it was just like, "Oh." He was like, yeah, "Oh." Yeah. He was like, "Oh, okay." And then like still took him some time. It, you know, he still didn't still didn't. You know, it took Uncle Boris, I guess, coming in to really get him to be like, "Hey, dude, come on. You know, you need to you need to make that shit." Um, mm. But then. The curse deleted footage, you know, that was that yeah. was kept in the drawer the whole time. But yeah, I think I don't know that that delivery was nice. But I think the line I will end up going with is that you don't owe anyone your life, not even me. Mm. Uh, from his God, from his mom, good. that, that was, was just good. like ah. Uh, but uh, a lot to choose from in here. That's for sure. Yeah, another one of my favorite lines. That's just kind of like you don't know the full implications of it at the time, but it's whenever he crashes his trains for the first time and they're laying him back in bed and. He's like, you can play with these when you learn to respect them. And he goes, but I do respect them. I love them. And and Bert goes, it's not enough to love something. You also have to take care of it. Um, and it's just like, God fucking damn, dude. Uh, and it's ah, uh, oh man, <sighs> poor Bert. Yeah. God damn it, dude. Oh, uh, you know, to to go from the Riddler to to Bert. Is nuts. Yeah, same year, 2022. Um, that's nuts. Big, big year for Paul Dano. Um, mm-hmm. all, I mean, also notably a role where he doesn't get physically, he doesn't get his ass beat. Um, he usually, mm-hmm. he usually gets fucking rocked. Really? If he's in a movie, yeah. Like that's there, there is an insane amount of movies where Paul Dano gets the absolute shit beat out of him. Um, okay. Twelve. There will be blood. Um, yep. Twelve years a slave. Yeah. Um, sounds like it. I guess uh, Little Miss Sunshine. 
That doesn't sound too bad. I don't know. He was young. Uh, that's a sad movie. Uh-huh. Uh, he was he was young though. I can't remember if he gets his ass beaten that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and mm-hmm. I never I've never seen it, but I haven't but heard okay. anything huh. about it. I'll have to keep an but, eye yeah. out for that. I guess. No, he just gets an emotional ass whooping in this one. Yeah, um, yeah. This one might be worse. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I'd rather get my shit rocked mm-hmm. than uh, than uh, my best friend fall in love with my wife. Um, rough, rough living. Um, but Poor yeah, dude. there's, there's so many great lines. It's an incredible screenplay. It's incredibly good looking. It's incredibly performed. Like mm. we might be looking at, at the, the best since, you know, um, and you know what I mean since for, oh, um, yeah. but, uh, oh yeah. Oh, sorry. My mm. Apple ID was being used to sign in somewhere. I'm assuming that was upstairs. Oh. Um, okay. but, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, but yeah, with that, I'm going to go ahead and do the plugs. After the plugs, we are going to rate this movie on a scale of 1 to 10, enjoyment and critically. Um, and then after that, we are going to do an album of the week. There is no announcement for what our next movie is going to be because wow. this is the end of season one. Um, but uh, season two will be coming. We are doing a season two. I can assure you of that. And uh, we do have some surprises in the meantime, you know, uh, we're we're gonna hit you with a couple cinema surprises in between season one and season two as a nice little bonus episodes and when you find those when you listen to those you will find out when season two is coming for sure nice little surprise for you there but uh yeah with that if you would head to patreon.com slash penny bloom pod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content all sorts of book reviews comic book reviews movie reviews and the like uh previously that is where you could have found penny bloom dispatch for free but starting next week penny bloom podcast will become penny bloom dispatch essentially um you know it's it's more of a segment based show a lot more uh you know uh time sensitive sort of stuff going on over there. We usually like to like, we talked about the Fablemans today. It's been a couple of years since the Fablemans came out, but you know, we we're, we're talking stuff that happened last week, this week, uh, you know, so, so on and so forth. And that's kind of, that's kind of a little bit more the goal of the Penny Bloom dispatch, more fun segmented sort of business. Like the show used to be when it first started, but, uh, yeah, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram and TikTok at Penny Bloom Podcast. If you want any updates on anything for sure, Twitter is the place to be, Penny Bloom Pod. Go ahead and follow there. You can also follow me at Coro underscore Bloom, C O R O underscore Bloom. And uh, that's where all the news for the show's coming is. You know, we've got a lot, we got a lot going on next month, just a couple weeks away. We start the Cinnamentalists. Um, we'll be kicking that off with, uh, on September 13th with a live commentary of Star Wars 1977. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited for that and you, I can't wait for you to hear it. We actually just recorded that recently and it's going to be the first episode. I'm so excited. Um, but we are getting to the indie movies here in a couple months in November. We'll be doing the Indiana Jones movie. So we'll, we'll be sticking with Spielberg, um, over there in November. So make sure you keep up with the sentimentalists and, uh, you know, we've also got our Star Wars weekly show right now where we're talking, uh, well, we were talking the Acolyte when it was going on, but we we pivoted to just general Star Wars discussion. As of yet, I can't guarantee you what we're doing over there right now. Because um, we're recording this really far in advance. I have no idea what we'll be doing by then. Um, but, uh, yeah. Let's see. Leave a five-star rate and review wherever you might be listening. And remember to download the episode, especially if you're listening on Cinema Surprise. Remember, mm-hmm. this is the last episode of Cinema Surprise that will be available on Penny Bloom Pod. So if you want to keep up with season two, if you want to keep up with what's coming on in between, stop listening on Penny Bloom Pod. Go search right now Cinema Surprise. Find it. Go ahead and follow um, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and download those episodes because then you'll automatically get updated whenever we release the season two, uh, the, the the little bonus episodes in between seasons. Um, so, you know, sp- 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 one of the surprises is spoiled that we will be having episodes in between seasons. However, you don't know what they're going to be on or what movie. They're just going to happen one day. They're just going to be there. And, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to miss out. You want to be following Cinema Surprise for that. Um but yeah, let's go ahead and rate this thing. How are we feeling on a scale of one to ten, enjoyment wise? Well, we can just rate it critically. Uh, I think mm, today yeah, that's, that's uh, I don't. Tense. I don't that's, think that's a ten on enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, there's any debate here. Um, 
we can just it was so funny. I'm I'm watching this next to next to Emily last night and <laughs> I'm I'm very comfortable crying during movies, mm-hmm. you know. Um and she she certainly knows this about me by now. Um <laughs> but there are some movies that I have I can't oh. cry every time I want to cry because it's just a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, um so you know I'll like roll over and I'll be like <laughs> Uh, just take you know, hit, hitting the sniffles, and you know, I know she knows I'm crying, mm-hmm. you know, but, but it, you know, she's nice enough to act like I'm not, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. Um, it would be uh, interesting. The dynamic yeah, no. is definitely different with someone in the room. Uh, that, yeah, well, that's... and it's just especially when it's a movie that just keeps you there. You know, it's not like it's like one scene at the end that wallops you. Nope. Like I. Especially on rewatch, there's a lot of scenes early on in the movie that take on a new oh. context, knowing how the movie goes. And it's just, I've watched this movie five times now. That was my fifth viewing of mm. it. It has not gotten old. I absolutely adore it. Um, and I could watch it again and again. It's only gotten better. So a 10 is a certainty for me, enjoyment wise. And I would be willing to throw it a 975 critically. I think it is that good. I think it is amongst the greatest greatest movies of all time yeah that's how i feel about i mean films. we gave banshees a nine five um you know yeah, yeah. Vis- I, i'd say like visually it just looked prettier because we're in ireland and we're doing landscaping stuff but visually as a movie looks this is prettier yeah like uh, no, like as far as what it takes to shoot a film yes there's this there's very few movies that look as good as this and that's that's incredible it's the closest thing to a documentary that i think we'll ever get you know, of of just Spielberg's life. I mean, the, I mean, it's pretty. It's insane how how. Well, and that's the other thing too is to you wouldn't want a documentary about Spielberg's life. You'd want him to do this. You know, you like that, and this is what he would do. So, like, that's what makes it so good, man. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we the Spielbergs essentially, mm-hmm. um, the Fablemans. The I absolutely kings adore it. of the project. I and yeah, uh, Casablanca. My first pick and my last in pick. the Fablemans. Yeah, you you did very well. The sandwich. I got the worst of the worst. The book of Eli. Let's go. I got the bottom <laughs> of the barrel. That's okay. Oh. You need some. Sh- you need. Well, it's not a shitter. You need some. No, no, you no, need no. Some it's, palate it's fun. Cleansers. You need. Yeah, you need the. You need uh, the middle. You need. You need the bendu. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, that's what you need. Yes. Um, and and the book of Eli is the bendu. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, no, we got some some crazy stops on this one. Movies that have changed a lot for me. The way I just think. Uh, Fablemans. Babylon did La Camira and Cure. Like those four were just like nice surprises. Holy man. shit! Like how have I not yeah. ever seen a movie like this before? Um, and yeah, that's it's... what's so great about this, and that's why we are definitely going to be doing a season two of this. Uh, oh, this yeah. was some of the most fun I've ever had doing a podcast. I've loved the surprise. I love mm. coming on and not knowing what I was going to watch mm-hmm. and then finding out what I was going to watch. It's so much fun. So this is kind of something I see going on in perpetuity. I, I don't really anticipate it being something we're ever like, all right, well, that's the final season. Um, until we run out of know. movies, I guess. Um, yeah, that's true. Until we have to watch um, Scooby-Doo every time on repeat. I guess that'll that'll be the end. Uh, yeah. When we did the 52-year journey through film episode on Scooby-Doo where we did the entirely we committed to the to the bit mm. and we just did that the whole time. Mm. Imagine if we did an entire season of Cinema Surprise committing to the bit where at the end of every episode we were like and next week we're covering Scooby Doo 2002, you'll never you know, guess it. and you'll, you'll never, never guess, guess what. And we're we covering. commit to it that way. Um, that would be that would be wonderful. But for a month no. straight, Scooby Doo <laughs> only. But Scooby Doo only, Scooby Doo exclusive. No, but uh, mm. this was this was a wonderful way to end the season, and I'm so very happy. I'm so very happy with it, and I can't wait to do season two. So be on the lookout for that for the next couple months. Go mm-hmm. follow Cinema Surprise. Go fo- go subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, as far as YouTube is concerned, if we do continue doing video for Cinema Surprise, it will be on Penny Bloom Pod. Um, just an easier umbrella for that. You know, it's not uh, we don't want to create too many outlets or it, it just it just becomes a lot to keep up with. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to watch on YouTube. You're probably safe to stick with Penny Bloom Pod there. Um, mm-hmm. But anywhere else, look up Cinema Surprise. That is where it will be. Um, but yeah, 
Let's do the final album of mm-hmm. the week for the cinema surprises. What was your album of the week mm-hmm. here? No relation to the movie. Oh, uh, really? Mine just, either. Uh, Mine either. Yeah. Just uh, one. Usually, I, I I do an album in which I've known a song before, but I needed to mm. to expand and hear the rest of the album. And this one is from Daniel Caesar. Um, I don't know much else other from him other than this one album. But after listening, I want to listen to more. But it is Case Study O One uh, is the album. Um, and the song that I knew coming in was Cyanide, uh, as track two. Oh, it's just a banger. He, he fucking cooked mm-hmm. with Cyanide. Um, but then I just put on the album just to, to listen to, and it was, it was one that I was kind of doing a lot of work, so I didn't know what songs were playing, but then when I listened to it right before this podcast, I... I, I know which ones I like. I, I really love like the beginning and the end for some reason of, of this. Right. Entropy and Cyanide. Love Again is okay, but the first two tracks, I love Entropy, I love Cyanide. And then Are You Okay um, was, was the other one that stood out to me. Um, but but the, the middle, it's not, it's not bad in the middle. It is very vibey, a very vibey album that um, kind of goes in, in many different places, kind of different accents as well sometimes. It feels mm. a little Jamaican um in, at in, at some points or a little kind of reggae uh-huh, in there. yeah which which is which is fun and and then uh kind of back to to normalcy and and everything but yeah you got Pharrell Williams in there and John Mayer um you know for for people who <laughs> John Mayer. like them yeah, cool. uh, yeah. I, I don't know yeah. I'm not a big John Mayer I don't know his voice is just kind of sounds weird to me for some reason I'm not a John Mayer um, guy yeah um, but uh, especially since I I have a Swifty girlfriend or a uh you know, oh, was that a previous? Swifty, Swifty, that was a previous yeah. relationship. That's how it I was one know. of them, and he is, and he's one of the worst. You know, generally considered. Ah. Like, I'm pretty sure they dated when she was very young, and he was 30. Um, mm. Wow, what yeah. album like, is uh, young enough to, to be? Him? Uh, is I don't there, know off the top. Is of there my one? Head. Is um, is there one that is like known to be the breakup album? For I think him? there is, but I can't uh, remember which one. Wow, um, that's I had no idea that they even dated. Um, that's yeah, crazy. Yep. John Mayer is one. Uh, John Mayer is among the uh, the the worst of the worst. There as, okay. as far if, if and if you have if you know a Swifty intimately, you know they don't fuck with they, John Mayer. Okay. Um, then yeah, no, but Daniel Caesar uh, is is the highlight of this album, not John Mayer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pharrell rocks. So, Love Pharrell. True. Um, yeah. Do dig, do dig me some Pharrell. But uh, I'm actually going with a movie soundtrack for this one. Mm. Um, not, not the traditional soundtracks I usually go with. Not a score, but a soundtrack. Mm. A compilation of songs put to a movie. A newer movie, a 2024 movie. The original soundtrack for I Saw the TV Glow is utterly incredible. Um, mm. Claw Machine... By Sloppy Jane and Phoebe Bridgers should, and I would go as far as to say will, win Best Original Song at the Grammy or at the Oscars next year. I can't fathom a song being better than that. Um, wow. Okay. Anthem of a 17 year old girl, the very first song and the last song, Claw Machine, you know, to, to mirror your choices. Those are my favorite songs. Um, Psychic Wound fucking goes. I've never been a scream screamo person but the chorus on that goes fucking nuts um and it's intense um is it all yeah, screamo or no 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 okay. far from it um okay wow far from it and and that's why like i i saw the tv glow also as far as 2024 is concerned is right now top two i didn't tell you i watched this recently right there i think with a rewatch it could be top one for me um which uh is I mean, wow. and the music is a big reason. It is so, so good and so poignant and so like so perfect for the movie. Um, hmm. I love that album. I saw the TV glow. Watch it, listen to it, everything you can. But uh, yeah, with that, we will conclude this episode and this season of Cinema Surprise. Hmm. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you, and I will see you for season two, baby. Remember, peace, love, and bloom, and movies are dreams, doll, that you never forget.